What's going on, everybody? It's your boy King Gabe here, and well, seeing as how, seeing as how I'm, uh, seeing how She-Hulk has come to an end and everything, uh, I uh, don't know if there's gonna be a season two to that. Um, I kind of heard mention of that in the episode. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna do that or not. But anyway, uh, for now, you know, since She-Hulk has ended. Um, as I stated at the end of that video, I mentioned about uh, possibly doing another um, reaction and review to another show. Um, preferably so, uh, shows that, you know, would kind of connect with, uh, say, um, the inspiration to my uh, comic series. And this, and we're going to be, for this video, we're going to be starting with Yu-Gi-Oh, of course. So, I'm going to be binge watching... Uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! episodes, the uh, Four Kids English Dub episodes, yes, the one with the invisible guns, you know, where they stop or we'll point our fingers at you. Oh no, the finger point. I'm going to jump out this window. Ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one, yes. <laughs> yeah, but, um, and yeah, a lot of, and knowing that, yes, a lot of time, Dubs are not always going to be perfect. That's what any, not Yu-Gi-Oh, but any show uh, from Japan is not going to have perfect dubs. However, uh, shows like Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Digimon, um, and even Dragon Ball Z uh, usually uh, tend to have some really, uh, tend to do at least a really good, decent job. Um, I would say at least ranging anywhere from uh, if not a hundred percent, at least ranging anywhere from, I would say maybe eighty-five to ninety-five percent at least, <laughs> or over nine thousand. <laughs> but um, and then of course there are several different dubs of DBZ and stuff like that. And I think Yu-Gi-Oh even has more than one English dub. Um, cause I remember growing up, uh, watching the TV series. There was um, like episodes like the Weevil Duel and the Panic Duel. Um, now here, I'm going to bring it up on Netflix to react to it. Um, on Netflix, it shows the way, like, my VHS does, where it's a two-parter, as it originally is, but, you know, dubbed and, you know, four kids still dubbed. However, when it aired on TV sometime, they sometimes merged the two-parters into one episode with a montage during songs like, uh, It's Time to Duel and There's No Backing Down. Or, I'm not going to panic, for some reason. Um, and also, one thing I know is Netflix does not have the uh, the turn count on the panic duel. You know, where he said, I beat you in five turns. So, so yeah, there's that. Yeah, dub, dubs, can, dubs are not always going to be perfect, but, but there are some that are a lot better than others. And we're about to watch one of the better ones, because... Trust me, I have seen some horrible dubs like uh, 90s Sailor Moon, um, Powerpuff Girls Z. Oh, dear Lord. They should, they really should have left that one in Japan. Um, and Sailor, Sailor Moon, I'm so glad they redubbed it because uh, it's a lot better. And also Tokyo Mew, uh, Mew Mew Power, a.k.a. Tokyo Mew Mew. <sighs> And I would say probably Card Captors possibly is a weak dub. Like I say, uh, to rewatch it, you know, dub wise, yeah, it because uh, there are a lot of fatal errors with it. Uh, as for because for one thing, they have a lot of episodes out of order. But yeah, so but you get the idea. I kind of sorry, sorry about the rant. Okay, but anyway, we're gonna go with Yu Gi Oh today and probably. Um, I'm thinking of doing the first two episodes, uh, for the first video. And, don't worry, um, we will still have videos where we're continuing to read the manga. We still, we're still doing that. Uh, there will be more manga reading videos, uh, matter of fact, if you're on Facebook, uh, which I need to, I need to post these links in my videos, uh, now, uh, so... I'm going to start posting these links in my description box to my Facebook pages. So y'all can definitely check them out. Uh, you can join Miracle Comics Facebook page as well as also Yu-Gi-Oh! Shock. Yes, I've actually made a Facebook group called Yu-Gi-Oh! Shock and Friends. Um, 
main topics to discuss there is like Yu-Gi-Oh and Static Shock. But we're also, but the group is also open to discussion from things like from, uh, say, other other forms of anime, um, DC and Marvel comics, Disney, and even a little Nickelodeon, and a few other things. It kind of var- it kind of varies with the interest there. But we do, but uh, but duly know Yu-Gi-Oh and Static would be the mo- would prob- would be the main. Uh, but, but yeah, other things we are the other things can be open for discussion in the group. So uh, as long as, as long as we keep it clean, you know, as Daffy Duck say, keep it clean, yeah, but keep it clean. <laughs> so yeah, def- I'll try to put. I'll remember to put those links in my videos. Um, I'll probably have it in my She-Hulk one. Um, it's well, I know it's up by now. So when you're seeing this, you'll already see the She-Hulk. But uh, if you hadn't checked in the She-Hulk review. Um, I should also have the links in that video and also in this video as well. So, uh, to my Facebook page, so y'all can sign up there as well. And also, and also, you know, the usual like, subscribe, buy comics, and support us on Patreon here. So, yep. So, got all that going. Uh, and, and definitely be more history videos as well. Um, like, uh, like the history of Star Striker. So, they have. Um, the continuation history of 2004 Dream League and so on, you know, uh, the Digimon and all that. Um, yeah, quite a bit, quite quite a bit to cover there. And I actually, believe it or not, have a few toy reviews that might be coming up. Uh, that might be coming up by surprise. So, uh, yeah, it's a few few other toys that I that I probably will do at some point um just waiting for a good time to do it so yep and also as well as comic book updates too so yeah definitely be on the lookout for all that stuff coming up and without further ado it's time to do 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 <laughs> with with complete respect to the franchise yeah <laughs> so let's start with the heart of the cards <laughs> Pyramids were still young. Egyptian kings played a game of great and terrible power. But these shadow games erupted into a war that threatened to destroy the entire world. So a brave and powerful pharaoh locked the magic away, imprisoning it for a millennium. Now, 5,000 years later, a boy named Yugi locks the secret of the millennium puzzle. He is infused with ancient magical energies, for destiny has chosen him to defend the world from the return of the Shadow Games, just as the brave Pharaoh did 5,000 years ago. Boy, the opening's real nostalgic. Yu-Gi-Oh! Yama! You know, and that, um... Now they don't do now. After a while, they don't do that long ago intro. They only do it. I, um, I guess when it gets when it gets to the episode, I'll let you know when they stop doing it. Uh, but it's a cert, it's a cert, so many episodes that they do that intro along with the theme song. Of course, I think that long ago intro. I think that's that's Dan Green too, um, with a very epic Yugi voice. So yeah, that's probably who's doing that. Yeah, <laughs> which would make sense because I mean he's playing he's playing Pharaoh with Tim, so why not? <laughs> and of course, everybody facing Pegasus. They pretty much made Yugi's grandpa the Yoda of the series, <laughs> especially in season one. <laughs> you know, like Yoda in Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, Tristan's old voice. Ow. Yeah. I will admit that I'm glad that they did change Tristan's English voice uh, when they did. Um, I think it's like in the Rex Raptor episode when, he finally, when they finally changed his voice from sounding like this to sounding like this. You know, the voice that he also uses when he plays Yusei in 5D. Um, 
yeah, it's a lot better than the voice we're hearing now, but it's not. But trust me, I really, yeah, like I, you know, um, I, I mentioned before how I really don't like Lula Karibos The Bridge series. Yeah, I think he really exaggerated um, with the whole with his Tristan voice uh, talking about Barney the dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> mm. To do. Ah, Kashi Chen of the Blue Flame. Hadn't seen that car in a while there. Um, yeah, right here. Kashi Chen of the Blue Flame. Yeah, that's. I've seen that card a lot when I first started playing the game. It was um, not very strong, but it is an interesting picture, though. And Bakura's there. Ah, Blackland Fire Dragon. Of course. Yeah, let's go check out the cool cards. The way that book, the way that book that Kaiba has, and and I, um, if you got look up um, Crunchyroll on YouTube, uh, this uh guy I, I can't think of his I forgot his name. Uh, but he does he does videos about you know different animes, especially Yu-Gi-Oh, and he explained um, that there was some text on this book in the Japanese version um, of what Kai was reading. Uh, I think he said it was something some German book or something like that. The way the book looks on here, it almost uh, it almost looks as if Kai brought his Bible to school. <laughs> hey, that could. That could, that, um, I, okay, I can go with that there. Um, of course, uh, considering what he's about to do in this episode, seem like that, if, if Kaiba was going to, uh, you know, try to take, uh, try to take the Christian road, seem like, I, I think that would be something he would do after episode one, you know, when he's trying to, like he told Mokuba later, he, you know, he, uh, he wasn't for sure of himself, and he was trying to figure out what he wanted to, you know, un, you know what, what, what was what in life, you know. So, yeah, you, yeah, that that seemed like that seemed like when somebody would probably go the route of, you know, probably going in a church, and, you know, ask, you know, trying to, you know, at, you know, like a prayer and stuff like that, you know, especially when they're when they're kind of lost and trying to find themselves, yeah. Like the lost sheep of Israel, yeah. So, hey, hmm. maybe that would actually be that would actually be kind of interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Of course, he is. With a sugar on top. Or, I mean, a cherry on top. Yeah, pretty please. Ah. The blue eyes white dragon. Mm hmm. I kind of have a problem with that. With that, um, he said there's only four blue eyes white dragons in the world. As we know later in the show, we know Kaiba already has three blue eyes white dragons, and of course, in the Japanese version of this episode, it's explained later. Um, I think before they went to get Grandpa's blue eyes, that Kaiba had acquired the other three in some uh, kind of some uh, dark dealings, you know. Uh, I guess it looked like I think he had hustled, hustled, hustled some folks in another country or something. Kind of, kind of dark stuff there. Um, so anyway, yeah, there's only three blue. I mean, four blue eyes in the world. This is why I have a problem with that. Three blue eyes, white dragons with polymerization make the ultimate dragon. So 
Uh, Pegasus, why would you make only four? That means only one person is going to be able to make the ultimate dragon. <laughs> and obviously it'd be Kaiba. Yeah, you... I uh, know, I know. It's supposed. To, I know rare cards are kind of limited and everything, but you think he'd at least make? I would say at least maybe nine blue eyes, white dragons. At least, maybe possibly twelve. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, mate, so four lucky duelists would get the ultimate dragon. And just. <laughs> And then Kaiba enters. Seto Kaiba. Hmm. Well, at least Joey actually tried to be nice to him there. Then Kaiba has to piss Joey off. Uh-oh. Of course he wants that blue-eyes white dragon. That's a big briefcase. Whoa, that's a lot of cards. What? I actually, I remember I was, I was actually, um, I had this episode playing in my head one time when I was at work, while I was, you know, doing, doing my, uh, doing my stuff on my job and stuff, and I was, uh, I had the episode playing in my head, and when it got to the part where he said, um, where he said, listen, old man, sell me a blue eyes, give me a blue eyes, and I'll trade you all of these. In my mind, and I got this from my, uh, from my boy Quintus back in middle school, um, I imagine everybody else going, ding! And when Grandpa says, no trade, double ding! <laughs> Cause he has money. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. And we could, and we'll find out who that friend is later. Oh boy! Oh dear! Very interesting how this plays out in the manga version, but we'll be get we'll we'll get to it though. Hmm. Uh oh. Oh, who the how? What the? Heck? Oh my goodness! Hey, look at this guy in the middle here. Ugh. I. And to think, he he actually appears later in the episode in the series. <laughs> and that guy's creepy. Oh boy! Yeah, when Kaiba asks you to, to face him in a duel, you have to take that challenge because he'll send his goons to get you. Especially in the manga version. Or season zero anime. That um 
that movie uh, about the red ice black dragon in season zero. Yeah. What in the world? I remember I sh I showed I remember my, uh, Christina and I were looking at these episodes and when she saw Kaiba like that, like ah, that look that almost looked like somebody of paranormal activity. Elevator fast. Uh oh. Ouch. Now I'm going to explain something about why Grandpa is in the condition he's in after the duel. And say to, uh, they to confront, uh, to go up against that little, um, part in the abridged series that was talking about for some reason playing a card game has caused me to become severely injured. Okay. The thing about that is reason why Grandpa's in the condition he's in and why it affected him like it did. Because this is actually before now, like before the show started, uh, it's easy to, um, everybody was playing these cards like the way we do in real life, you know, on mats and stuff or on the table. No hologram, nothing like that. Because uh, there's even an episode later in a, a flashback of Bandit Keith, of course, dueling Pegasus, and there's no holograms involved, and it's a tournament duel. So, um, event. So Kaiba has now, in, so this is the introduction of now where they use the hologram duels, and of course, you know, the next episode leads into that into the tournament that they're going to be going into using these holographic arenas and which are actually invented by Kaiba Corporation. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kaiba Corporation started these arena duels and everything with the holograms. And, of course, we know what they would evolve into in Season 2 with the dual disc that we all know and love. So, yeah, the hologram thing really probably caught Grandpa off guard. And because of it, probably the force of it and the shock from it really kind of got kind of um, got to him probably you know kicking his ticker you know but so yeah he was not expecting this type of duel this is the first time any of them encountered that because even Yugi was surprised by this and also um I know we're going to get to this in the manga but I got I got to state it it's it, the manga really shows the detail of why this affected Grandpa so bad, as I just explained. Yeah, with the dual box and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, this is why Grandpa is in the state he's in. It's not that he got hurt physically, but, yeah, his um, stress level from and everything really kind of got to him. Probably raised his heart rate up a little bit from the shock of it. So, and then, you know, he being up in age and everything. <laughs> So, yeah, that's why. That's why he's in the condition that he's in and had to go to the hospital uh, after this. Mm. Oh, boy. Mm, he feels no shame. And of course he tore the card. So nobody could use it against him. Oh boy. And that and and on top of the sh and on top of what he's what grandpa's already experienced from the duel itself, you know, holograms and all that, as intense as they were, now you'd have to deal with emotional strength because you know, like you say, his that card was that blue eyes white dragon was given to him by a dear friend, which we find out who that is later, and yeah, that really kind of tore him up inside there, you know, the fact. Like, oh my goodness, you know, 
It's just like somebody gives you something really special and then all of a sudden it gets damaged or something like that. Yeah. It, yeah, it would probably affect you really emotionally, especially if you're real close to the person that gave it to you. So, yeah. Ah, Yugi's deck. Oh boy, those eyes of Kaiba. Oof. Hmm. You can do it, Yugi. Now we're about to get the first duel. Ah, yes, the symbol of friendship. And yeah, I know some. I know it's pointed out that it's a smiley face. I actually, when I first saw that, I actually thought like it was like a symbol. Like when I mean, what I mean by that is like you know, like a symbol in Japanese or something like that. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, smiley face apparently. But that's still not bad. I mean, that's, I mean, hey, you know, friendship will make you happy, you know. Or as some people, or as my little pony say, friendship is magic. And that was, and being that Taya was my high school crush back then, yeah. Really, that was, uh, one of the things that kind of drew me to her. <laughs> back in high school. <laughs> Good old Taya. <laughs> Definitely the uh, what they call um, how how how, see, how would you put it the um, the guiding I think it's um, the guiding angel of the show sort of yeah um, sort of her to Yu-Gi-Oh is like Della Reese to touch by an angel. <laughs> Two thousand, yeah, the two thousand life points, Caesar. Ah, oh, here we go, here we go, Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh yeah. Prepare yourself because it's time to duel. <laughs> Dan Green. <laughs> I gotta admit that uh, Hitatsumi Giant card kind of reminds me of the Cyclopses from the Odyssey there. Remember uh, with uh, Hom Homer's Adventures? Yeah. Thanks to the holograms, Joey. Whoa. Yeah, I can see, can see, can see right there. Even and even though they don't have direct attacks back then, you know, like they would, you know, when Battle City started on, uh, where you could attack your opponents directly, the the force from the monster attacks still has an impact there. And as we just, as I just saw. Kaiba kind of flinched from it there a little bit there. So, yeah. Just imagine somebody who's... Somebody at Grandpa's age who's doing that for the first time in this level. So, yeah. 
Impact can cause some damage too, you know. He's going to multiply it. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. I remember... Oh, boy. I remember commercials of uh, the different toys of, the, of like, Yugi Battles Kaiba. And I remember Sagi the Dark Cloud was one of the figurines there. Him and the Dark Magician. Mm, not quite. Not quite. You got. You'll 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 see. You'll see. Oh, that looks like Sangin. So he gets to move another monster to his hand. Oof. Uh oh. The heart of the cards. Oh yeah, I know what I know what card is gonna be. Gaia, the fierce knight. Spiral Saber. That's what I know they called it that in the Japanese word is Spiral Saber. No, the first blue eyes. Yeah, but he has the other three though. And the white lightning attack in Japanese is bust the stream. And now the second one. Oh boy. Mm. Uh, I keep fighting. Ah. That'll hold that'll hold them there. Ah, uh, is uh, Grandpa's Yoda moment. So it also kind of reminds me of um, Grandpa speaking to him. Like this kind of reminds me of Splinter in the first Ninja Turtles movie when he's when they were speaking to him in the campfire. His uh, Splinter spirit. The pieces of Exodia. Yep. Exodia.
Oh boy. Ouch. Dark Magician. I guess co court adjourned. Case dismissed for the judge, man. Oh, no, the third one. So now he has all three blue eyes on the field. And he summoned them one at a time. He didn't put them on the field all at once. Hmm. Oh boy. This guy, there's only one way out of this. To assemble Exodia. Come on. As, as Jesus, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, as, as Jesus told Peter, don't doubt. Don't doubt. That's, that's why Peter went to sinking in the water, because he took his eyes off Jesus and doubted. Don't doubt, Yugi. Your friends are with you. Pathetic card so I can end this, Maggie. My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba. Oh, hold on. Hold on let me go back. <clears throat> Draw your last pathetic card so I can end this, Maggie. So, <clears throat> okay. So I can end, I to end this, Yugi. Draw your last pathetic card so I can end this, Yugi. My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba. But it does contain the unstoppable Exodia. Ah! Impossible! I've assembled all five special cards. All five pieces of the puzzle. Oh, boy. Ah! Ah, uh, it's not possible. Ever been able to call him Exodia Obliterate? So, bam! <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, that's gonna cause uh, that's gonna cause that impact's gonna cause some uh, some damage there. <laughs> well, it's the first time for everything, Mokuba. If you really want to know, open your mind! <laughs> hey, Grandpa's alright. Pegasus. All right, we're gonna go and take a look at the second episode. I did. Yeah. Told told you I, I enjoy making these. There really. <laughs> Rock. <'em. clears throat> Whoa. Oh boy. <laughs> I get it. I uh, see what you did there. <laughs> I actually imagined myself dueling Taya a few times there. She's got some pretty good cards. Yeah. 
Yeah, you need... And I know some monsters have special effects and stuff, but you still need magic and trap cards. And don't forget some trap cards. Mm -hmm. huh. Ironic that that poster has uh, the Black Luster Soldier and Harvey's Pet Dragon. Like a premonition to another episode coming up. And yet, um, if y'all notice, Joey looked up at this poster. It's uh, actually supposed to be an announcement for another tournament. Um, now, of course, that's not this. It's not the same tournament that you know. It's not Duelist Kingdom, but it's another tournament that happens before Duelist Kingdom. Um, probably, I would say probably the same one that Rex and Weevil are about to show up in when they see them on TV. Um, probably that one, possibly. Um, so Joey actually wanted to learn dual monsters, not only to win, you know, just in general, but also he was going to try to compete in these tournaments to get, um, to get prize money from other, from these other tournaments. And the reason why is because, so he could pay a lot of his dad's, uh, debt, uh, a lot of, his dad had a lot of, um, debts and stuff like that, as well as also bill payments that he was behind on. So Joey... Joey was taking it upon himself to to win um, to win contests like this in order to use the money to pay for those to pay for those bills there and help his dad out. Despite how crooked his dad is, yeah, but like I say, he did he does care about his dad though. Yeah, that was at least that's how it was explained in the Japanese version, and that also explained why Joey would do a lot of um, gambling as well. Oh, because you know he had a lot of his card, you know. Like the Time Wizard, Time Roulette, uh, Graceful and Skull Die, and even a card just called Gamble. So yeah, that was the reason behind a lot of uh, the theme with why Joey would uh, do that. I think maybe his dad might have gambled some, probably was a gambler too. That's probably why he was in the debt he was in. So that probably was all that Joey knew in terms of, you know, trying to help his dad out though. So yeah. Yeah, in his case, he, um, so he had something, he, he was trying to accomplish, um, something kind of, uh, something even before, you know, what, what we're about to find out in the next episode. Hmm. Ooh, boy. Okay, Karate Kid. What? He ain't, grandpa ain't gonna tell him wax on, wax off, is he? Yep. Yeah, especially if you want to win those tournaments, yeah. Oh boy, Joey's got a lot to learn here. So now, the, now they're watching the what, Dual Dome on TV, re the regional champions. Rex and Weevil. Who is voiced by an actress who voices a lot of elderly women in animes. <laughs> and Rex Raptor. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I guess... Uh-oh. 
Well, Grandpa's starting to sound like my coach from 8th grade gym class. <laughs> Oh boy. Ain't gonna make him run laps, is he? Oh, hold on, everybody. Hang on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry about that little interruption there. Uh, it's a, just a little text from Wifey that she is on, that she is about to head home, so. Gonna finish up this episode here. Be done. Be done before she gets here. Oh, whoa! Ouch! <laughs> yeah, that Joey about Joey reaching out to hug Grandpa kind of made me think of Tom Holland when he tried to do that to Tony Stark. Oh, it wasn't a hug. I was just getting the door. Yeah, I play that scene again. <laughs> Let's contain the unstoppable Exodia. <laughs> Bam! Oh, boy. And now back to the duel with Revel and Rex. By the way, I really like Taya's outfit in this episode. Yeah, didn't really pay much attention to it the first few times I watched it. But, um, yeah. like the pink. I don't know. Just really like it there. Two Eddie King Rex. Uh, I think we're going to find out there is a there's a monster stronger than that when he gets to Duel's Kingdom, of course. Or, I think, doesn't he? Seem like he has some dinosaurs stronger than that, though. Hmm. Hmm. Ugh, that would not be a pretty sight. Oh boy. Well, of course, yeah, you kind of could have should have seen that coming, Rex. There, a weak monster that's weaker than yours. Of course, he's gonna have a trap card. Looks like he's been dethroned. <laughs> uh oh. Oh boy. That trapped. I wonder how many attack points did 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 the basic insect go up to, and how many did the King Rex lose? Hmm. Yep. I know things are a little different in the show, especially with season one, how the game is played compared to real life, but yeah, I still want still yeah, still curious about that. The inventor of the Duel Monsters game. Pegasus Maximilian Pegasus. And, and, of course, we all know his Japanese name was Pegasus J. Crawford. Hmm. I think Maximilian Pegasus sounds better. Especially when you call people like him and Kaiba by their last names. Mm-hmm. 
do his kingdom. <laughs> you know, I actually, uh, I remember one time I made, I did a drawing. What if Michael Jackson was Pegasus? Could you guys imagine that? If, they, if Michael Jackson was a live action Pegasus? Hmm, it actually would be pretty interesting. Probably have to change his hair color, but yeah, that could get, that possibly could work. Things little Yugi. Yep. And in the Japanese version, when they popped the tape in, he said, Yugi Moto. <laughs> He said it, he was speaking um, a little bit of English real slowly. Because, of course, Pegasus is from America. Let's just say him uh, speaking, you know, say, when he says some of the stuff in English in the Japanese version, like, Oh, no! <laughs> Sounds kind of funny. Not to mention when he swears in the Japanese. <laughs> Uh oh. Welcome to the Shadow Realm. And Yu Gi Oh! Dun dun dun. Oh, we're on a time duel here. Fifteen minutes. Oh, oh my God! He's re reading Yuki's mind. This is not going to be good. Oh, the the dragon capture jar. That and in a later episode, uh, when Kaiba duels Pegasus, um, the Japanese version, Yugi actually tried to warn Kaiba about the dragon capture jar because of Kaiba's, you know, having his three blue eyes white dragons. However, in the, in the four kids dub, he says you got to believe in the heart of the cards. So. And I don't think he told about, you know, Ancient Egypt and the Millennium Item in the Japanese version. But, of course, I kind of can understand why they would add this for the dub there. Because, you know, you know, um, for the American dub, they probably wanted the kids to pretty much know what was happening from the very beginning. Oh, boy. And now Pegasus controls Yugi's dragon. Ouch! And more realistic than the holograms. And we all know who that pharaoh is. We'll find out.
Hmm. Oh, it's, I think it's that Millennium Eye. The Millennium Eye. Hmm. I think that might work. Looks, looks like that plan is going to work. Because Pegasus uh, can't see what you don't know. Sort of like how uh, Batman blocked his mind from the Martian Manhunter. Dark Magician. Mm. Pegasus and his humor. Mm. Oh yeah. Dark magic attack. There goes the dragon. Hmm. Uh, might. Oh no, not. This could be dang. This this doesn't look good. Mm mm. Oh boy. That face was made look kind of creepy there. Hmm. Celtic Guardian. I know, um, my sister, my sister Casey likes that card there. The Celtic Guardian, that's her favorite, her favorite card. At least I think it still is there. Oh. Oh. Oh dear. So you used to the Dark Magician is now being controlled by the Eye of Illusion. Hmm, don't think, see, I have illusions on Dark Magician, so, yeah, the mage might be vulnerable. Come on. Dang it. Dang it. So cool. If just one more second, he would have had it. Oh, I I take the translation for this is just beginning.
Oh boy. And this is how we lose Grandpa's soul. Oh boy. Let's just say, uh, so that's one thing, one thing that was definitely, and especially, uh, Christina noticed, um, hearing the four kids when, um, uh, when Grandpa's soul was taken, like, Grandpa! 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 But for some reason, the Japanese version, I don't know if this was the voice, um, I, I don't know what the deal was with the voice actor in the Japanese version, but he's like, Jesus! Jason, Jason. Yeah, it's kind. Of, I mean, he. I mean, he. He is. He's his volume is up, but it just doesn't sound. I mean, you think about like if your relative got taken, uh, and they're trapped and you know taken away from you, you'd be like, you'd be like, oh my god, my grandpa, my mom, my granny, my you know, so on, so on, just like with the. It's like what Brownie mentioned and Grandma got rolled by a reindeer when <laughs> we was talking about what I would do if that happened to my granny, you know, or any of my relatives, so, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it seemed like the, uh, that's, yeah, the four kids had more energy with what, um, Yugi has more energy, seemed like, in the English dub, in the Japanese version for that, that, that scene with Grandpa's soul got taken, so, yeah, I don't know why that is, but, okay, you know. At the say, just like I said about the English dub, you know, no, at the say, uh, mistakes are made sometimes, so, there, that, but that, don't, but that should not discourage anybody from watching this, so, definitely, um, have fun with that, really like those first two episodes, def, um, just like, you know, back in the day, me and Casey watching this on Kiss WB on Saturday morning, you know, Used to wake, and to say we wake up seven o'clock, cause Yu Gi Oh would come on like at seven and at ten o'clock on Kids WB. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Uh, she would she would call and wait like eh, like Gabe, hey, it's time to get up and watch Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> then, of course, we did watch some of the other shows, but yeah, we was up first thing seven to start to start the morning with Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, good times, good times. So, um, yep, definitely. Definitely, uh, we'll be doing more of that. Uh, still, we'll do more of the manga, as I stated earlier, and, you know, other other videos uh, will be coming. If you like this, like, share, subscribe. Um, share, Like I said, share with your friends. Buy some of our available comic books. And also, support us on Patreon, even if it's just a dollar a month. Definitely will appreciate that there. Uh, and then you'll be able to get access. Also, you'll be able to support us. And also get access to Patreon only videos, a lot of the music videos that's uh, been uploaded to Patreon only. And so, oh, excuse me, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, and um, and we will see you in the next video. Uh, was something was something else I was gonna um, was something else I wanted to say. Uh, oh, also um. Also, yeah, like I say, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! If you def uh, if you want to watch, you know, at the same time as I'm doing these reaction videos, just like, you know, what I did with She-Hulk, uh, it is on Netflix, uh, the 4 Kids dub, uh, so that way you can kind of follow along as I'm watching these there, if you, had not, if you aren't already doing it. Uh, and also, if you want to definitely, because I will mention some things about the Japanese version, uh, if you, you know, that, that I remember, because I did. Because uh, Christina and I, we actually watched through the whole Japanese version of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! From, you know, Season 1 all the way to Millennium World. So, yep, now we're looking at the 4 Kids dub up. Now look at the 4 Kids dub with you guys. So, uh, if you want to definitely check out the Japanese version as well on your own time, definitely do that. Um, all you got to do is go to Crunch, um, Crunchyroll. It's available there. Um, I got the app on my phone for Crunchyroll. So, yeah, I have access the Japanese version of Yu-Gi-Oh! as well as also other anime. At the moment, we're looking at the Japanese version of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we're, you know, on our own time, we're looking at the Japanese version of GX. So, yeah, definitely check it out. And let's say that way you can see the have the best of both worlds. You see the four kids and the Japanese. You enjoy 
and have have fun with both sides, yeah. And also collect you some manga. <laughs> and we will see you in the next video. So take care everybody. See you later.